Hey guys, what's up? It's Seth. I'm here with Javier, uh, one of my very successful former students who uh, went from being a graduate student working like a slave to now working yeah. uh, in PPC, managing $100,000 of monthly ad spend. He's very happy. And not only that, he's going to share not only his story of his, of his success, but how he did all this in spite of parental family pressure to go back to school, which he knew was not right for him. So thanks so much for being here. I'm well, glad to be here. You got it right, Seth. Working in graduate school was really slave work. I was putting in over 80 hours a week. Of course, they paid for every, for everything, but I was putting 80 hours a week and only seeing like 760 back per month. It was horrible. Not only that, but I was also working around dangerous toxic chemicals and it was extremely stressful with extra hours outside of the outside of the research. So how I found the course was when I got tired of doing that thing, I started talking to my professors and coworkers and they said, get your PhD. And I was like, I hate masters. I am definitely not gonna get a PhD. So I started looking online for other things to do and I found the course through Matt's channel. And I started looking into digital marketing. And I spent like about two months just researching it myself. And I was like, I was in graduate school, happened to go to another conference or give another presentation over my nanotechnology research. Or yeah, yeah, what were you, uh, and what were you studying again? Just quickly, I don't think you I, mentioned it. I was doing my master's in agriculture and nanotechnology. Agriculture and nanotechnology. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you found, you, you, you're you researching digital marketing, you're in, work, working like a slave. Yep. And then what, and then uh, what happened next? So then I just decided, I decided to take the course and I started the course, but I wanted to still stay in school for a little bit. So I tried to do both at the same time. But I found out that every time I would learn, I'd be so excited about the course and learn so much. Then I'd go back to school and all the creativity would just be killed, completely killed out of me. I like want to want to get better and want to do something in digital marketing, go to school. And it's like, here's the radioactive species of metal. I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> it would just take every creative one in my body when I go to school be destroyed or taken out of me. So I had to make the decision like about four months and I had to like about four months and I had to make the decision, stay in school. And trying to both at the same time or just forget the school, that's not going to help me. Because I did a research on like what the jobs after I get my master's in agriculture, I think the max it was like maybe 55, and then you get to 58 if after 10 after like 20 years. I'm like, I am not signing up for that. That's so I decided terrible. to leave. Yeah. So after I left school completely, I decided to start working. But then I got the backlash of like my friends, my family. What are you doing? You're paying for your school because I was I was doing nanotechnology research, so they paid for everything as long as I brought. Did research and brought money in for the university. So they paid for everything, but it wasn't, it still was, it's still a scam. They promised you they're gonna pay, but you only get a small percentage of what they're gonna pay. So, and you and you have to work these crazy hours in oh order yeah. to get the pay, right? Unhuman, ridiculous 80 hours plus a week. It was horrible. So I, when, every day, every day I was doing the course, I get my parents would say, What are you doing? Get back to school. Or like, you have to get your I always wanted a doctor in the family. And I was like, I don't want to be a doctor. <laughs> So I, I just kept focusing on the course, but eventually it got like, I got like people would tell me, um, what are you going to do if after a few months and you don't have a job yet? Well, you left school. They said school will always be there, but the end the school, um, they said the course will always be there, but you only get your education once. So there's just a lot of pressure, like from mom, dad, brother, sister, people just not believing, saying it's not possible. Now how, no one gets a, no one gets how, a job. How did you, um, so people are always wondering, like, were they, you said that in some cases they were saying this stuff to you every day. Yeah. How did you deal with it? Like, did you just go shrug it off? Did you, did it bother you at all? Like what, you know, what was that like for you? Well, at first it was extremely, it was extremely frustrating because I'm just, I left, I left school, you know, it's like, it's not what normal, not what most people do. And I'm there trying to do something new. And it's like the people that you trust in to give you advice are saying, it's not going to work. You don't know what you're doing. This course is new. It's not. It's the tension is. It's not going to work. Stuff like that. You're not going to get a job. Every month you don't get a job. What are you going to do then? You're, we're not going to help you out after that. So it's like basically saying if you don't go back to school, then you're on your own. And I was like, it's like, do I choose to go back to school just to make other people happy, or do I just continue focusing on what I believe is going to actually give me the life I want to live? So at first it was frustrating. Then I just had to. I, then I tried to like um try and kind of argue and sit, give them the facts, break down. Every, every single detail of graduate school, I broke it down for them and showed them in plain. I made a 20 point PowerPoint presentation, 20 pages. Wait, slow down, go back. You, you made a what? It's just, so uh, just to convince them why on why I was leaving graduate school, I made about a 20 slide PowerPoint presentation to show the pay, the hours, the time after that, what exactly what happened and how sucky it is after you finish with that.
master's degree or whatever. And even though I show them all that evidence, they are still like, but it's an education and no one can take that away from you. And that's what's oh. important in this life. And God. I was like, what? It's in brainwash. And it showed me that it's not going to work. It's not going to get me where I want to be. So I was like, after, after I did all of that, I was like, there's no point in arguing anymore. I just had to tune everything out and just pretty much focus 100%. I just went, I got, went home, I put on my headphones and I just started doing the course nonstop. And then I'd put the volume up when, <laughs> when people would come to the house, I guess I'd put the volume up so I could just focus, you know, but eventually. So you were, you were living at home when this is happening too. Yeah. Yeah. That made it very difficult. So eventually what happened was I came over here to the Georgia, well, I was looking for jobs down there at first, but I came over here to the and Georgia. And just area. to give you context, people, I know Jeremy here talks faster than I thought I <laughs> talked fast, but you're talking faster than like, but you're just so excited. So I love that. Yeah, he, I'm excited, yeah. He's from Texas and now he's in Georgia uh, because of his job, but sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I was doing research in, in agriculture and nanotechnology. So I spent a lot of time on the farm or in the lab and I was down in Texas farm country where I, I started looking for like digital marketing jobs and then the nearest one was like four hours away and there's only four opportunities. And I tried to get one client and it came down, I had to educate them about the internet first and then try and get them to spend money on Google. And I was like, that is not happening easily. So I, was, I started looking for different cities and I saw one of Seth's course for uh, um, the job walkthrough in Atlanta. And I was like, well, I have my girlfriend actor, my fiance now lives in Tennessee. So I came over here to Atlanta and Lucky her aunt let me stay with her for for sight some time. So I stayed here and I was just applying for. So I came here and I focused. And I just focused 100 percent on the course. So I like took a whole notebook full of notes just through the course. That's just me though. My That's awesome, man. Oh, wait, open that up. Yeah. I want to see. I did not read it, but so, I just like like this. Is like this is the course. I just took notes after notes after notes, just like going in detail, memorizing stuff. Every That's single, awesome. Every single lecture. This is just the first one, and this is my supplemental stuff right here. Oh, so, that's so great. I was I was serious when I came over here. I didn't have time Good. to pay anymore. You know right. what I mean? Right. Good. So, that's yeah. the right attitude. So when I came here, I guess I st I started applying in June, and my first I, I checked on my email. My first application went out on January seven, and when I got my offer, and I started the job. I got my offer February twelfth, and I started the job on February eighteenth. And how did I apply? I guess I just started. I applied. first I made like a sample campaign. And when I made a campaign that impressed some of them, and I did what Seth says by ma making my LinkedIn, really making the LinkedIn look nice. And I got a lot of recruiters, but they wanted me to go Washington or California. So I got a lot of recruitment. At, of course, the, the, wait, the, wait, wait. So you first. remember, you have no experience. You just started oh, yeah. the course. How long were you in the course again before you started to get the, these the recruiters or the the this this first job, this first application, January? Yes. I was in the course for probably about maybe a month. And as soon as I made the LinkedIn, I already started getting recruiters. I was, and I was like, I'm not ready for this. So I actually, I turned off my availability. availability. So I was <laughs> like, it happened so fast, I wasn't ready. Like I got a call. I got, that's when I got an interview with Google that I told you about earlier, a while back. And I was like, I wasn't ready because I was still like in the course, but it just came and I what wasn't was even that? trying. I remember, I get so many messages, but I remember when you say the Google, um, did they wanted you to do like search consulting um, for PPC consulting, PPC consulting. Yeah. That's yeah. funny because you'd be, I've dealt with those people and it's funny because you're giving people this advice, but you're working for Google. So mm -hmm. it's like, you wouldn't have any free, it's a terrible job. You'd actually be, yeah. you, you wouldn't have any freedom to really tell people what they need to do because Google I, has I very, I found that out when I was talking to them. Cause yeah. I feel like when I was talking to her, it's like, it seems like they're more interested in getting you to spend more money and actually yeah. helping you manage your account properly. Is what I yeah. found out when I was doing the interviews with them. It's but, like, uh, I say, it's like if you went into, um, planet Hollywood or, or Bally's or, you know, MGM in, in Vegas, and they had like a consultant that was going to help you gamble. <laughs> it's like, you know, who you he's go. working for. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are, oh, wow. This guy's really yeah. going to help me with my blackjack. So, yeah, so anyway, right. so with it very quickly, it sounds like obviously you were very focused. You were very driven. Um, you took all those notes. So you got the, the, um, the, the interview. And then, so what is, what was the job that you were hired for? And what did, what were you doing from day one? I was hired for as the SEM specialist. And the funny thing about this is how you say in the course that it doesn't matter if you have, cause it said you need a degree in marketing. Um, mathematics, economics, and I didn't have any of that. So the funny thing is, though, that when I started there, I was actually the first person in the company history to be hired and go straight to the PPC team. 
usually they hire somebody and they start like in the bottom like local listings or like just pretty, pretty much copy and paste that then after like maybe a year to six months then they move them to like another department and the funny thing is a guy there who had got a degree in digital marketing from a georgia university guess where he started in the beginning <laughs> and then i come <laughs> along no degree and i like bump it straight into ppc and now i'm like a junior SEM analyst i'm just like SEM analyst and they throw already a hundred thousand dollars of ad spend at me and i'm just managing that pretty much data so they they, they they just basically checking the schedule checking the keywords adding keyword negatives doing a little bit of research on the company they do some competition to what's going on and it's pretty much increasing bids lowering bids trying to get a higher click rate right lowering. and this is all it's stuff awesome. that if you're in the course um it'll make sense if you haven't taken the course you learn all this stuff but that's amazing is that you learned it so quickly and then now you're in this in this job and and uh and how do you mind if i ask how much you're making just north of 40. that's that's awesome yeah. and so, so that's a graduate school that is beautiful because <laughs> <laughs> you were basically getting paid what you said like two dollars an hour after 80 hours a yeah. week over there Pretty but it's much. Yeah. the funny thing is like i say is you said in your other career with a master's degree you would have maxed out at 58,000. Yeah. Now, maxed out. entry level, you're over 40, and it's your entry level. That's what's so it's amazing. Like, it's just the start. Yeah. So I'm, excited. I'm excited. You, um, $100,000 a month in month uh, in ad spend, with that on your resume, within even, even with you could start looking now, and you're, the recruiters will start coming after you. I heard you got some offers. <laughs> yeah. For like 55 to 60, but I'm like, I like it here, so I'll stay for it just to get the experience, you know? That's but so that, great, I got man. Five offers already, to be honest. Five oh, offers. Oh, dude. I want you to send, send me those messages. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to print them out. I can blur out their names, but mm -hmm. it's so great, dude. I know it sounds like it's I feel like we're in some infomercial where it's like it can work for <laughs> you, but it's just the market. They just need people. They're, so it's like yes. funny to see that yeah. company had a hundred thousand dollars worth of clients spending money on Google. And before they hired you, they had nobody to manage it. Yeah. And that's just so how this works. Yeah. So we're, we're at the PPC team, but the thing is that everyone on the PPC team, and I was talking to the guy that hired me, and he actually, because what I heard, just like a little backtrack, what I found out from the course, I was actually more prepared for the job than like, like I was more prepared than anyone else that was working there. So when I started there, the guy that hired me says, man, he's like, he started to watch me working through the AdWords edit, and he's like, man, you do that pretty quick. You do it better than me. I was like, that's just how I was learning how to do AdWords editor, you know? Uh, and what he told me that everyone that is working there had to be taught PPC from like ground up. You know, they all started from the beginning, had to be taught like over like a year to get to where they are now. Wow. But then with Seth's course, I just took your, took your course and just focused and jumped in there and talk about throwing better the 14 list. And wow, show them my sample the campaign and boom, that's jumped great, straight man. to the PPC team. That's so great, man. <laughs> that's nice. I'm so happy to hear you say that too about the sample. I'm actually, so I'm updating the course not to not to uh, change a lot of information, but to I want to um, make it clearer to people that to make sure more people do that spreadsheet to oh, make yeah. people, more people do, more That's people what do. Pretty much got me in the door. Yeah, there's so many you know things in the course, and I and and I want to make sure that people do the right things, but. Uh, I'm thrilled for you. And what um say what so now what is your family's reaction? To... Oh, this is funny. So my mom gave me a call a couple of days ago and she what she said, she said she was talking to my older brother and they were saying, Wow, I can't believe it actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> that was their response. But she said she said, Well, stay there for six months just to make sure it's real. I'm <laughs> like, it's real, it's real. I know they got a paycheck, yeah. right? They're paying you. You actually real, called you... me um, before you called right now, asking me um, if I actually got a paycheck or something. Are they actually going to pay me just to make sure? But... <laughs> yeah, they paying you in U.S. dollars, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but that that was they, they, my the experience was. I can't believe it actually worked. That's what <laughs> that's what they she told me. So it just shows that in the, and they didn't really believe it would work, you know. But it really, if you're trying to do the course, it's really important. Just if no one believes, just focus and push through, because when it comes down to it. 20 years later or five years later, when you're stuck back at school or stuck at your regular job and your friends are doing their same thing again, you're all gonna be in the same place. But if you take the risk or take the chance, just focus within a couple of months, if you put diligence, you could already be out of there and be moving up and giving them some experience. And some of my friends back in Texas saw what I'm doing now. Now they're trying to get into digital marketing, you know? But if That's I stayed great. there, then it would be, we would all just be there doing agriculture stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. It's very inspiring. And I know you seem so like so passionate and enthusiastic about it. Um, it's good. Changed my life. Changed my life. I'm not going to lie. 
paid my life. If not, I would still be in graduate school making like $3 an hour, working 80 hours a week, killing myself. No, I am glad I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great, man. Um, well, cool. And did, did you find, just to dig into this a little more, like you said, didn't you say like even your pastor was on you to go back to school? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, because my dad talked to the pastor and he was like, these kids don't value, these parents come to this, because my parents are immigrants too. So then he would like say a sermon in the church. These kids come with their parents from another country and they spit in their face by not wanting to get the education that they could never get. And I was like, okay, I know you're talking about me. It was for you. Oh, wow. You got a call out. Like, come, come on. So, they didn't say my name, but. So what does your dad and the pastor and any of those other people say? Are they still, are they still, you're still waiting to hear from them to. I, I, it, I, or... they, it was so much, um, I just, I don't really talk to them much anymore. Oh, okay. Well, it's cool, you know, because in a, in, a, in a year or two, you'll be doing good, you'll be relaxed. And, you know, they just don't know any better. I mean, the thing is, you can't, yeah. you can't really hold it against them. They just have very old, outdated way of thinking. They but, think um, the college is the only way. If you don't have a degree, yeah. you're going to, I don't know, like explode or something. Yeah. But people think. <laughs> and I, I think what you said is like, unfortunately, and this is the advice we give to, I get, you know, it sounds like what you're saying is, and this is kind of just... It's a simple answer. Some people ask, how do you deal with all this pressure from your parents? How, you know, that's a big problem with uh, people who drop out of college and stuff. And the answer is, you just have to put your head down and do the thing that you know is going to work. Yeah. And you just can't deal with it. Like you said, you tried to make a PowerPoint presentation. I've heard of other people, yeah. you know, trying to explain to their parents or their family this stuff. And I do think it's really good that like you should try to explain it to them initially like give them a shot you know explain yeah. to them why something isn't working for you or explain some people say can you help me explain you know digital marketing i'm like listen i say go through the free course because it explains everything mm -hmm. you know but if they're going to continue to argue with you or be negative upon you after you've explained then it's like you should just cut it off at that point i think that's exactly. the answer because people want to keep trying to figure out other ways to convince them and it's like it's just not going to work if you tell someone hey listen there's an industry where there's a shortage of workers and there's a high you know high demand and good pay and i don't need a degree and i'm going to seek that opportunity some parents and I, i've had students who have great parents and they're just like that sounds great why don't you go for it honey we'll support you wow keep talking that's about beautiful. it yeah there's beautiful. a lot of the people i met in new york were like that i was really happy i think like dre sean and nick their parents were pretty supportive i was really happy mm -hmm. but if the parent looks at that and says well you should go back to school then you you would never accept that from a non-parent you know like it's just oh, yeah, it's just insanity not. it'd be too not too right. instantly it's like insanity yeah. it's like hey guys i just found uh three hundred dollars on the street i'm gonna go pick it up no wait a minute don't pick it up. Go over there and put your hand and slam it in the refrigerator. You know, it's like it doesn't yeah. make any sense. So it's yeah, helpful. That's true. It's really, I think, what you said, and maybe we, you know, someday we'll expand on this for people. Is like, there's not really a detail, like a ten step thing. It's really just that you have to cut them off. You have to. Yeah. It's like having a toxic friend. You know, there's a lot of good articles about you know you don't want toxic people in your life. If they're gonna be like that, they're toxic. You have to put your head down and do what's good for you. So I'm so, and I'm so happy you got this result so quickly. And now it sounds like you're closer to your girlfriend too. We're about to get married pretty soon now. Now that they have the this job that actually uh, can support a family, they're getting married pretty soon. So that it's a, it of course changed my life. That's great, man. I, yeah, I will say one thing though. Like when I was over here in Georgia, actually applying, I like, get calls every single day. Come back to Texas. Come back to Texas. So I, had to, I pretty much like what happened is like after what happened is like I just had to like turn off the phone and just focus, you know. That's all I did. I just apply, apply. My audience, you know, matter what anybody said, just apply, apply, and then boom, and then finally, you know, not long, <laughs> only one month. <laughs> that so, is very. That was that nice. really really great, man. Especially I have to say, like, um, you know, when you take the course, you know, everybody has different results in terms. Of, sometimes it takes one month. Sometimes it takes three or four. Um, you know, you're, you were just outside of Georgia. So I'm sorry, Atlanta. And it sounds like you're in kind of a smaller town or city. Well, it's about 45 minutes. I'm um, out North. So it's a little bit smaller, but I'm in the Atlanta area. So it helps out. So it's near Atlanta, but it's outside of Atlanta. So I got to think the, mm -hmm. the, the number of PPC experienced people over there, I'd zero, <laughs> zero. So yeah, even it's, yeah, it's, zero. It's, it's all over uh, the country. It's like that. Um, well, cool, man. Well, thanks for sharing your story. 
Uh, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? I would say it's like, exactly as exactly I said, you have to like just cut the negative talk. Negative talks out is what is true. Because no matter, even if you think that it's not going to affect you, having like your mom or your dad that you love interesting, it's not going to work. It's going to affect you. So I just have to cut it off and focus. So that's what I can really say. And don't, and don't let any discouraging words get to you. If they want to start talking to students, say, well, you got to go back to work and you can't really focus. The one thing that I see was really hard is when like one of my, one of my close friends said, what are you going to do if you go over there for three months and you still don't have a job? And like, even though they're like asking, a, it's like a question that's like a negative question. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, why would I, why, why would I even want to think about that? That's like, so I just, I just had to, all right, man, I got to go. And I just turned it out and forgot about it and just focused. Yeah. That's a big thing. Questions about, can be negative. So about, not just yeah. questions, but questions. There's negative questions that you want to avoid too. It's based in doubt and fear. And, um, you know, I don't think he meant you any will, ill will. Uh, mm -hmm. But a person, you know, that's why it's important to have people around you. And that's why the cool thing about the course now is you, there is a community of people you can meet um, who are very positive minded. But yeah, people, people in your life who may not mean you any harm, if they don't understand entrepreneurship or this field, they may just unwillingly project their own, their own fears. Yeah. So it's important. And if you do hear that negativity to just fill your mind with the positive, positive. stuff, you know, I heard this story. I'll just, I'll end, it's funny. Mm -hmm. There's this guy named uh, Kevin Trudeau, who I listened to a lot of his stuff, and he he was um, giving a presentation for like this business opportunity that had already made him a lot of money. But a guy there was telling him it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And 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 he wow. Kevin said, "Hey, that's fine. It's not for you." Tried to excuse himself very politely, but the guy kept pushing him, saying, "It's not going to work. It's not going to work." And he's sitting there thinking, "It's already worked. I already have money from this." But the guy pushed him, and now this is a guy. He's been super successful, but this guy hitting him in the head with this negativity for like 30 minutes, it affected, he said, he admitted it. He said, it affected even me. Mm -hmm. So he said, I had to, he wow. put on one of his own tapes, which I thought was funny. Cause sometimes I was like, I listen to my own videos sometimes. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yeah, Seth, you're being, yeah. you know, I agree. <laughs> he had to listen to his own video or audio for like 30 minutes. So whatever it is you have to do to stay on task you have to do that you know you have to kind of get into battle mode for a little while if you're in that situation especially it sounds like you were at your parents house that's very Every difficult because you're in the environment their environment it's not your environment it's not your own apartment so that's where the headphones really do come into play you know sound canceling big yeah. time <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> And I'm not advocating that you cut off your parents or anything, you know, we want to stay connected to them. But for that stuff, if, or for a short period of time, you may need to, you know, I had one time, and it's the last thing I'll say about this is, uh, when I was first in 2013, when I was first turning my finances around, and I was first realizing the power of the mindset, I was working in a t as a temp at this company with a toxic environment. Oh, it was terrible. People were gossiping and they were just snappy, you know, just, just negative people. They just have something bad to say about everything. Yeah. And it was got to the point where I couldn't even have casual small talk because it just was so negative. So I literally got to my computer and I put on my, my uh, headphones that had these uh, certain CDs I was listening to that were very positive about, you know, possibility and po very positive things. And for eight hours a day when I was at this, this job, I had my headphones on. And I had my headphones on when I went to the bathroom and when I walked anywhere. I was in my own world mentally, completely protected from this toxic crap around me. So, you know, a lot of people I know out in your life, you go out there and maybe when you listen to a podcast that's inspiring or you are with a certain friend, you feel inspired, but then it's like everywhere else it's crap. It's like put in the headphones, tune them out, mm -hmm. tune them out, man. You can do it. You have permission and create your own new reality. So it sounds like you totally did that and, you know, really yeah. powerfully. So... So uh, have, good one for One of you. my buddies down south, we started the course together, but he's going to come. Now that he saw like what happened with me, he's coming straight over, which is, I'm, he, I'm happy about that. So if he's he coming to Georgia. His, no, he's like going to start digital marketing, but he's going to try to finish his career, his degree first, but he's going to start right away. But I say that if, if you are willing to send the people out, do the hard part first, you could lead so many of your friends outside of that trap if you just do the diligence first, is what I found. And I like that. You mean the fact you're you're like a leader? Yeah. You're actually inspiring your friends to do something yeah. they never thought of. Yes, yeah, so now that because at first like we we did together, then we were kind of like it was going kind of slow. He went back to school, I went back to school. Then now that I'm over here, and he we, I just got done talking to him today. He asked me how the job is going, and I just give more encouragement, encouragement. So if you 
break through the barrier of people's ideologies, then they see it's possible they could follow you through it. So not just by you finishing the course and doing with diligence and focusing, it's not only gonna help you, but it can also help all your friends that are gonna come behind you. So if you're doing the course, it's not just for you, it's for, every, it's for everybody, you know, it's like that. That's beautifully said, beautifully said, man. Well, thanks so much for uh, hanging out for a little bit and uh, we'll circle back with you in you know in the future and i'm sure you'll be doing even better okay that's the plan <laughs> oh, yes. oh yes all right man have a good night thanks so much all right good night Tiff. thanks for reaching out okay now don't don't hang up mm -hmm. that is, that a, the... is that a, is that a bad no it's fine oh, it's okay. fine let me see